good afternoon uh, once again and uh, we can start the session now dr prafull has joined thank you dr pai you may uh, please continue good afternoon ma'am sure sure let me uh, let me start yeah sure uh, yeah so uh, welcome back everyone i hope you had the uh, uh, i hope everyone's been able to complete lunch uh, so in if not like if, yeah please please take your lunch and and then and have along with uh, this as well so uh, so they will not be joining me for uh, this part of the interaction uh, the, so he had other commitments but uh, I'll, I'll i'll try and answer most of your queries uh, uh, as well as I can. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, maybe uh, start sharing a bit. Uh, just a second here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh so can can everyone just uh, maybe uh put in is uh, put in a yes if if you're back and you're ready to go or put in no uh like uh, if, uh, just uh, if you're ready if you're back can just can you just start by putting in yes yes that would be great so if we have like a good enough number of replies then then we'll we'll, we'll go ahead and and begin uh, so sure great uh thank you thank you everyone so uh yeah so so uh, uh i had initially like uh, you know planned uh, for the first half of the session to be somewhat interactive and uh, uh, and i hope to get get a lot more done in the first half uh, i wanted to find, kind of show you a couple of examples and so on and so forth but uh, we couldn't do much of the much there uh, so we'll we'll see what uh, yeah, we'll we'll cover all of that in the second and uh, you know uh, we plan for a hands-on exercise. We'll see if we have some time left over in the second. And uh, uh, but we can definitely kind of uh, you know I'll definitely uh, leave you with uh, some resources which you can work on yourself uh, at your own pace. All right, uh, great. So uh, so let's let's simply go ahead. Uh, so I think this is where we kind of ended it in terms of uh, like you know uh, so how uh, layer selection is where we were uh, uh, where we were most of the time uh, so towards the end how could you find layers we opened up the layer library uh, showed you the documentation uh, and uh, uh, and showed you which ones uh, uh, like which uh, like how you could select layers for your work all right so now um let's look at now you know uh existing example uh for say uh let's look at a very quick example which kind of uh will take you through alexnet for a bunch of images and will 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 uh, we'll cover most of these uh, things then, and uh, then we'll we'll open up and uh, we'll go for transfer learning or training from scratch. Okay, so let's let's do that again. At any point in time, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, please go ahead and put that in the in the chat, and we'll we'll try and get to it. Yeah. So. Yeah, so let's uh, open up uh, these first 
uh, you know let's let's open up a live script and then work with it uh, so before uh, go jumping into live scripts uh, so have you used live scripts before uh, like i know many of you have no, had not used matlab so have uh, have so th to those who have used matlab so have you used live scripts or dot mlx files before uh, all right okay i can see mostly it's nose okay sure uh so so don't worry uh, so so live scripts are basically like you know uh, we did a lot of things on the command line uh, such as like uh, you know uh, i think uh, we like we, we put in how we could put in image data stores and so on and so forth we did all of that in the command line but uh, again we want to like if if we are to do any sort of programming we would we would need to kind of uh, create a script to do that right so this is where live scripts come in so how you can get started on a new one is you can simply go to the home tab and uh, you can click on this new live script button so this opens up a dot mlx file which is a matlab live script mm, if you have worked with dot m files before uh, so those were just matlab scripts uh, so uh, to open matlab scripts you have another button uh, we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, we'll work with primarily live scripts, and you'll see why. So live scripts. Uh, this is what a typical live script looks like. Uh, so you it opens up in something called live editor. Uh, so you can write a bunch of programs here, and uh, uh, you know you can uh, have rich text in here. Uh, you can uh, have uh, hyperlinks. Uh, to different parts of the code and so on and so forth and then uh, the gray boxes in here are the places where uh, uh, you have code itself okay so if you've used your uh, jupyter notebooks by any chance then then this is uh, somewhat similar again so so uh, so but this is uh, like uh, uh, inbuilt in matlab all right so so we'll go ahead and run a particular live script to classify objects with pre-trained networks. So this is just a refresher. We'll, we'll run through this very quickly. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll load up a bunch of uh, possible networks. In this case, I'll, I'll load up AlexNet. So you can see, uh, you know, you can break your code off from one section to another by using this section break at this end. You can choose to run each section by either clicking on this run section option, which will run that particular section which is selected, or you can uh, run uh, this thing on, uh, run that section by just clicking on this blue highlight, which comes on the left, all right? Uh, so you can do that. You can insert a bunch of options such as images, hyperlinks, equations, and so on and so forth, which, uh, which uh, and you can insert like, normal equations using like the equation editor similar to microsoft word or you can insert equations using latex and, and so on and so forth as well so uh, and you'll see uh, like on the right there are options so basically i can choose to view the live script output uh, in the in this window itself so uh, either you can choose to have these outputs appear on the right or you can choose to have them appear in line after whatever code. You can also choose to hide all the code as well. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clear all the output and uh, let's begin from scratch, all right? Uh, so I'll just run this, yeah. Uh, now you can see I'll, we can pick one of three networks to load, okay? So in this case, I'll, I'll start off with AlexNet itself. Uh, uh, um, uh, so can anyone confirm if if you if my screen is visible? Uh, sure, great, great. Uh, Amrendra, uh, I am not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, if uh, what the issue might be. Yeah. So 
yeah so we'll go ahead uh, might be network issues at your end but in any case i think uh, you know we'll, we'll uh, this might be recorded for future and so okay okay sure uh, so so uh, to open up live script so open up live script you can simply click on this new live script option over here on on, on the home tab all right so we'll go ahead and uh, uh, import a network so you can see i introduce a drop down here uh, so introduce this uh, by inserting a control so i can insert a bunch of controls it can be numeric sliders drop down menus check boxes or edit fields and so on so these controls are useful if you are like say teaching a class or if you want to vary some parameters and you don't want to kind of go back and vary these each and every time you do all right uh, so uh, in this case i i don't want to vary all of uh, like this so i just created a uh, i just created like say a control saying a drop down and i can say uh, like put in the labels like net is equal to alexnet and so on and so forth right so an existing control i can simply uh, modify as well uh, so you can see what things i have right now all right so uh, you can give different labels whereas and different values as well and they can take those in all right so i'll just run uh, i'll just select alexnet all right and uh, you can see alexnet is um, loaded and uh, what i'll go ahead is show you a network uh, the network layers okay so you have all the network layers over here as uh, just by typing in net.layers and uh, you can see uh, you can inspect different classes towards the end of it uh, simply by looking at uh, all of the uh, like class names. So if I just uh, remove the semicolon at the end and run this again, you'll see all of the classes over here, right? So there's Tench, Goldfish, we've did already. Enter, uh, yeah, yeah. So how to add the next line of code? uh so you can simply type in the next line of code like uh so yeah so uh so then uh, let's let's look at images okay so so i have a bunch of images inside uh which uh, inside this folder okay so there are almost 12 images in here uh yeah so there are almost 12 images in here so I'll, I'll go to the next section here which you can do from either creating a section break from here or you can simply uh do run in advance and it will it will run the next section so i'll just go to the next section I'll, and i'll click run in advance okay so what we are doing in this earlier section is uh, we are just uh, reading one image showing how it looks like and uh, uh, depending upon its size yeah so you can see uh, so we are so we read in an image uh, the image can be seen here it's the image of a seashore and uh, 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 we took in what the input size was and we resized the image so basically what we had done earlier right so earlier we uh, specified the input size in 227 cross 227 manually but what you can do is because this input size is available in this variable you can simply take that and use it for resizing all right so uh, so we just resize the image and now let's just run this entire in a thing in a loop using the image data store so we select the folder path in one variable and we create an image data store out of it okay so if i go ahead and create an image data store now you can see it opens up an image data store on the right uh, where it shows me there are three plus nine twelve images as we have in the folder 
And you can see these images are of different types. There are PNGs, JPEGs, TIFFs, and, uh, and so on and so forth. All right. Now, now you can go ahead and classify images one at a time, right? So either you can do one at a time or you can go ahead and, uh, you know, just so this is very simple uh, in, in a for loop. How can you access images from a data store and uh, and and then go ahead and classify them? Right. So this is not how you would train uh, deep neural networks, but this is just showing uh, classification in action. OK, you are not doing any sort of training here. All right. So. Uh, so what we do is we have uh, we simply read in uh, if you use the read function uh, so it will just uh, read in the first image and then go on right okay so someone's asking me to zoom okay is I think this should be better yeah sorry about that so I'll do uh, I'll go ahead and maybe remove this. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm simply so I read in the image data uh, the images in the image data store. I'll I'll just go ahead and read each image, resize it, classify it, show a score as well, and uh, uh, then display the image along with the title as the label itself. All right. And so you'll see what output this gives okay so you can see images are being classified one by one and uh, you know they are going ahead with this yeah so yeah so so you see uh, it has run this entire thing uh, so you can see the first image it says uh, the on top is what the classifier put out as the label. Uh, so you have the first image as seashore, the second one as breakwater, something as a hot dog, uh, when it's clearly fish, right? So you can see uh, uh, this is it says it's a Shetland uh, sheep dog, but actually if you look closely, it's a it's a cat. Uh, this it classifies as bakery, but it might you might classify it as cupcakes as well, uh, something like or lakeside, but it's it's just uh, maybe road. It's uh, and uh, if you see these images here, like you know uh, a child in a bucket. So instead of say, detecting child, it says bucket, uh, right? And a studio couch and so on and so forth. It's just a, a, a toy. It's uh, it's it's classifying as something else and, and, and so on and so forth, right? So I, I ran this on all of these images because I wanted to show you how simple it was to run through 12 images in one go. Uh, and if, if you get this, you see that, you know, just by using the read function on the data store, I could proceed through rest of the images one by one. I, so I did not really have to add anything in the loop uh, and uh, we could just proceed through it. Also, it was important to see these probabilities. So you can see this is this has pretty decent probabilities of 0.77. So and and we know it is correctly classified. However, if you look at this, so while it is fish, it is classified as hot dog, right? So so uh, however, the probability also is very low, right? Mm, so. Uh, then comes uh, something like this again. Uh, so it's a cat, but it's re uh, it's read as a sheep dog, and and you can do that. Uh, again, a bakery, uh, which is again has a very low probability of 0.09. Uh, again, this one has a less than 50% chance, right? And however, then there are things like these, right? So AlexNet recognized it uh, to have a bucket, but it did not recognize the child in the bucket, but if I if someone were to give give me this thing to recognize, then I might have said it's a child rather than a bucket, right? So so that so you can see uh, like how a lot of basic things AlexNet a deep neural network which won the ImageNet challenge got wrong, right? So so it's 
uh, I just wanted to highlight the fallibility of deep neural networks uh, still. OK, and uh, uh, why it's important to see that. All right, you can see a fire hydrant. Uh, it is being classified as a paddle. But then again, its probability is much less. Now, there are, a, uh, I just wanted to, to go over this quickly because I wanted to highlight, uh, like, you know, how uh, just whatever we had done in the, pa in, in the morning session. So, what is the ma uh, let's look at a couple of questions which have come in so what is the meaning of the numeric value yeah i think those are probability scores as we had highlighted earlier uh, you get both labels and scores from the classify uh, function output okay why are we using read instead of im read to read images from the image data store uh, so you're using read because im read reads individual images so it's read use reads of uh, data from a data store so so read is a different function uh, and im read is a different function uh, so im read is specific to images and and it can read images off of your local drive and so on uh, however read is generic to a data store it can be an image data store uh, audio data store file data store and so on and so forth that's why we are using read so to know more, what you can do is you can simply highlight this help, and uh, yeah, you you'll see uh, open the help browser, and 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 you can you can go through that. Uh, why is the ID not incremented? So the ID is automatically incremented when you're using read instead of uh, instead of I am read. Uh, so if I type in read here. No. Uh, yeah. So you can see there are uh, like you know there are multiple ways this can be used. So read is what we are. This is what we are using. Read is read data in data store. So it can be an image data store and so on and so forth. So uh, you can see uh, the description. If you see the description here, so data is going to read image data or data store returns data from a data store and subsequent calls to the read function continue reading from the end point of the previous call okay so uh, that is why you do not really need to kind of uh, do any sort of increment operation here but if you wanted to read a specific image in the data store you could go ahead and do that using uh, read image as well okay so if you uh, if you used something like read image How to read a single image uh, in a data store? Yeah, so so yeah. So re if you want to read a specified image, okay. So use read image, okay, from the image data store. So if you want to read the ith image file, say, uh, let's go ahead and do that on on, on this right now. So, uh, so let me open up a new section and say read image or oh, I'll, I'll i'll display the image as well i am show read image this is ids and uh, let me read uh, please give me a number like uh, you know uh, which image should i read let me read in the third image maybe okay and let's see how it Okay, let's. Someone says seven. No. Yeah, so let's let's read in the. So this was the third image, which was there in the list. You can see the first, the second, and the third. And if I put in seven, so this was third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh. So this was the one. So, so you can choose to read a single image, per, or you can use uh, read to automatically increment. All right. Uh, yeah. 
so if you want to kind of say classify images off of the internet as well you can you can go ahead and do that you can simply provide a file name uh, you can simply provide the url uh, to that image and uh, you know you can do a web save to save it to a file and 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 then read it uh, or you can uh, uh, like you know and you can continuously try to kind of delete these images as you as you go and so on and so forth as well so so this is an image of a monkey uh, which we took off of the internet uh, i hope it is uh, able to access it uh, so in this case yep so this is the image that we got and uh, uh, it we asked AlexNet to classify it and it classified it as a macaque, right? So I hope this helps you review all of the concepts that we covered in the morning, uh, right? And le let's let's jump into advanced deep learning for now, right? Uh, should we proceed? Are there any questions? Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll wait for a couple of minutes for questions and then we can go ahead. Uh, I hope I answered all of the questions regarding the image data store and so on. And uh, in case there are any other questions, please put those in and, and, and we'll go ahead with this. What is batch normalization and dropout and what is its specific use? Okay. Uh, Okay, although we haven't, we'll, we'll not cover it in this. Are there ways to gather image data from the web? Okay, sure. Uh, in an automatic way. Yeah, I think you can write a script to scrape through websites. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if we have a ready made example for that, but uh, you can definitely write a, a, a way to scrape through websites and gather data. Um, so uh, so the HTML content from the web page, you can you can gather that and uh, you know uh, and, and and scrape that and and go over that to kind of work with it. So yeah. So again, if you uh, look at what is batch normalization and dropout, and what are its specific uses? So it's something to normalize, or it's something to kind of, uh, uh, like, without going into too much detail, it's something to kind of, you know, make sure the network learns well. I so I still refer you back to the documentation to learn more, and it will throw us off if we go into go into details of it. But please drop an email if if you're interested to learn more and go through the documentation. So it will it will just uh, uh, something to kind of uh, prevent the neural network uh, or deep neural networks from going all over the place or haywire. Yeah. Again, uh, as an ML, are there any criteria which we have to choose from the list of nets? Are there choices specific to any data type? So this is the screen, the slide that you have up on the screen. So this is it. Uh, so uh, go through your research papers, go through documentation examples. Uh, and uh, there are deep neural and see if your if the neural network is uh, is applicable to your task. So uh, you have to tr uh, trial and error is the way to go. Like I don't think there is a sort of a good neural network versus a bad neural network uh, unless you know what task it is. Uh, while writing a research paper, how do you put the entire pre-trained network as an image? Okay, uh, what is the difference between batch normalization and instant normalization? Again, I'd, I'd refer you to the documentation for that. Uh, if AlexNet and ResNet can work on images, how do I choose for, between them? So again, there are various consideration, uh, considerations. Will this PPT be shared? Uh, then we'll need your email. Okay, sure. Well, we'll I'll, I'll share the PPT with uh, a, a PDF with the uh, uh, with ma'am and 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 uh, or I'll see if I can share a link a, sh a shared drive link with you and which you can download the uh, the PPT as well as the code and you can work on it on your own. Uh, for the others, I think uh, you know 
uh, let's let's go ahead and look at a few examples and i think you might that might clarify some of these questions for you otherwise we'll 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 come to the end and we'll we'll uh, we'll again uh, try to answer these okay so uh, if you are working with deep neural networks so there are two approaches that you can take all right so one is uh, train a deep neural network from scratch or use a pre trained model all right so uh, pre trained models uh, you already know of such as alexnet uh, and and i'm talking about when i'm saying training approaches you mean training approaches for your specific task okay so uh, many of you had questions on what network should i use and do i need to like you know create a network from scratch and work so if you need to train your own you may there might be situations where you need to train your own network okay but how do you identify those so basically uh see if your if available pre trained models do not work on your data set uh say you are doing an object classification task like alexnet uh does uh and uh, uh so if it provides a low accuracy on your data set then you may have to retrain it or you may have to train uh, your own network right uh, so you may if there are different category definitions if the category that you are looking for is not available in of the one of the thousand categories that are there in alexnet you will have to add to those new categories or if there are different tasks right another thing is if the pre trained model is not available for your data right so most available pre trained networks have been trained on natural images like images of scenes which you can which appear in nature however say you are working with medical images or say you are working with uh, uh, infrared images or optical slide images of slides or say paintings or scanned documents right your deep neural network might not be trained for that so in that case you will have to train either modify the existing deep neural networks or train a network from scratch all right uh different task uh, so this point is basically maybe you were uh, uh deep neural network uh was being trained for classification versus but you need to use that same neural network to do some sort of regression all right so so it's 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 like that uh, so you may not have uh, the choice of task again might be different right so training your deep neural networks from scratch however might take a long time and uh, it it will it will take you a lot of time as well as computing power to train a neural network from scratch uh, so so in often in many cases what we do is use a pre trained model like alexnet or resnet right so how we can use them is we can build networks from these uh, scratch or use these pre trained networks so so pre trained networks if you if you if we saw the image of what a cnn does right so they have a defined layer of orders and defined parameter values right so they can be used for inference without any training like how we saw alexnet just being used for inference without training the act of just uh, inferring what is there in the image okay uh, and and there are uh, if you want to get started with deep learning okay uh, so there is alexnet or vgg or googlenet which you can get started with uh, other nets like resnet uh, there are different sizes of those uh, there's resnet 18 101 or 50 or there's inception v3 and so on and so forth so these are effective for object detection and semantic segmentation sort of workflows but so if, depending upon what your task is uh, you may need to kind of use that uh, uh, just give me a moment here uh, i i might uh, i need to recharge i need to find the power outlet
Yeah, is this is this clear? Uh, or or uh, you know, if you are looking at networks which you need to kind of implement on some other platform, uh, like you know, so you, you which you need to ultimately deploy. Uh, so you, if you're looking at computationally efficient or lightweight nets, then you can uh, look at something like uh, you know, uh, uh, squeeze net or mobile nets or and so on and so forth, right? So there is a list of models, and this is one way that you can get started with. All right. Also, as I said, uh, research papers are a great way to kind of get started with. So you have uh, research papers which you can, uh, like you know, uh, put out by the various researchers, and and in deep learning uh, as a field itself, it's very common to kind of. Uh, uh, share your networks, uh, share your trained networks with other researchers, and usually uh, uh, you have to, uh, you you may need to kind of put it out in the open so in in uh, for others to kind of try out for themselves as well, or to try out whether your results actually stand valid. So in that case, you can access pre-trained models put out by other researchers in MATLAB, and you can also import from other frameworks. So uh, if there is a direct Keras or CAFE model importer, uh, or if you're using other frameworks such as TensorFlow or PyTorch, uh, you which have be, been most popular, uh, then uh, you know you can import them directly into MATLAB via something called Onyx or Open Neural Network Exchange, which is like a compatible platform for uh, exchanging models. Okay. And uh, there are uh, we are working further on on being able to import all of these models directly in MATLAB as well, and uh, the TensorFlow and PyTorch models. And and you you'll find uh, updates on this maybe around the March or April time frame. Where uh, it, yeah. otherwise any neural network uh, which can currently be created in any of these other frameworks, you can. Uh, work with MATLAB. Uh, work. Uh, you can import them in MATLAB and start working on them right away. So you don't have to be limited by using the same platform that uh, they were being designed for. Yeah. So any questions here? Uh, Can we order these nets based on complexity or or, or accuracy? Uh, yes, you can. I don't think I have a slide on this in this slide deck, but uh, you can definitely uh, order these in based on like their size, the number of parameters, and uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, their uh, uh, like you know the number uh, their implementation size and so on. Uh, like if you were uh, how much size do they take up on uh, on the disk? So you can definitely kind of do that. Uh, can I show one example on this? How do we plot performance graphs? And yeah, so we'll we'll look at performance graphs. But before that, if if I could just point you to the examples, and so uh, I'd say that you know import onyx. Uh, so if you just type in import onyx and uh, look at examples, you can see how uh, pre-trained YOLO v2 uh, 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 have been imported into onyx, imported via onyx, or also exported via onyx. All right. So you can do the both. You you get ready-made examples to do both of these. In the MATLAB documentation, I'll I'll just place the link for this in the chat, and and maybe you can pick that up and uh, work on your own.
So how do you compare different pre-trained networks in research papers? What parameters do, do, we, do we consider? So uh, uh, I would again say like, you know, uh, accuracy might be one such parameter which you can look at. But again, it's again, look at how other papers have compared it. Look at what is usually given typically and then uh, make that decision. So, so there is no one correct or wrong answer here. Uh, so, to most of these, uh, how do we performance uh, plot performance graphs and see how good they do? And if uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll let's look at let's jump into that before we get uh, and then there are a couple of questions. If there, if there is some output size, then number of filters. Does it mean that? Uh, 64 different patterns are detected. Yes, it does mean that 64 different patterns are detected. Uh, yeah, so we'll, so there are a couple of questions. Yeah, so we'll, 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 let's jump into the uh, thing. Can these imported nets be modified? Yes, you can import and modify these nets. So similar using uh, Deep Network Designer and, and you can go ahead and do that. All right. So. Now let's look at uh, what uh, you would do if you are looking at training approaches using pre-trained networks, right? So uh, you can either use the pre-trained network as is, or you can modify it using something called transfer learning. Uh, so I don't think you'd be able to use as is because I don't think you'll be able to. Uh, so this is not the most use case, which uh, this is not the use case which most people would relate to. So using this like using a pre-trained network and modifying it uh, for transfer learning is where uh, uh, most of you would look at doing things okay uh, and uh, so this answers that question which is there right so it, it will you can go ahead and uh, uh, modify these neural networks as well so what does transfer learning actually look like so if you remember uh, you load your pre-trained network and if you remember your initial layers detect low level features such as edges blobs and so on while last the final layers learn task specific features that is how to classify into what category and so on and so forth right so if you were doing transfer learning for some application you need you retain the feature learning parts of the network okay and replace only the final few layers which uh, now you need to modify to learn feature specific tasks all right and uh, uh, you train the network again but this time because you do not have to modify weights here you train the network you can you, you'd be good with training the network on hundreds of images for tens of classes instead of millions of images and so on all right and during this you you can predict and assess network accuracy till you get the trained network all right uh, is that is that good uh, i hope that answers a couple of questions there uh, so uh, there are a couple of questions in transfer learning which weights are modified so you are again modifying weights for the entire network but it's primarily these weights for the class task specific work uh, layers which you are mostly modifying yes uh, so anything any other questions can we compare cpu time and gpu time with with gpu time computations no i wouldn't say so i would say that uh, you cannot really make a clear comparison there so yeah yes uh, so uh, so there is a question asking whether task specific uh, layers means the fully connected layer uh, yes fully connected part so yes it is the final few layers such as the fully connected softmax and classification layer right so we'll let's open up an example and uh, and 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 then do this and and you can you can you can go ahead and see 
yeah whether this training changes weights and so on if we are adding layers or any modification for that matter is there a logic by which we do it yes so there is this logic right so we are retaining how features are computed and however changing what these features are used to classify objects in so that is the logic basically uh it, i'm afraid it's it might not be more at a broad level this is all that i can say uh from, from this uh because data set is completely different from the net if if you use transfer learning for medical images can you do it uh can i because the data set is completely different from the network uh, on on which it was trained all right sure uh yes you can so i have two examples here uh let me take this one example on for so classifying mri images and let me take another example on for identifying digits in an image okay so i think once we go through that it will clarify a lot of doubts that you have and we can go ahead with uh, like you know uh, answering any questions after that all right so let's look at this particular example this is the mnist handwriting recognition example so uh, you might have come across this data set this is like the hello world of uh, deep learning so to speak uh, so you have all of this data on handwritten digits uh, so let me just open this up in the explorer and show how this data looks uh, so you have this data such as say like you know 0 1 and so on and so forth like you know all of these are written uh, in addition to that uh, there is a bunch of uh, data sets here which which you can use to kind of work which you can work with okay and uh, uh, what we are doing is well let's just uh prepare the data set and then go ahead with it okay so this might run a bit slow uh, because i do not have access to a gpu but uh, it should it should run fine and uh, we could we should be able to do this and then we'll look at the other example and take on any questions as well so all right so uh, so the next 1 hour uh, sort of uh, or 1 hour 10 minutes is is all that we have for uh, like we'll 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 just use it for this itself so uh so what i'll do is i'll just check this once yeah so yeah so basically we've written a function for preparing uh, uh data so what this is doing is it's reading the existing data set and 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 preparing it but uh, it is no different than uh, uh like you know reading a image data store and so on it's essentially the same all right so let's let's look at a couple of images uh, so if we just maybe or if you want to look at this um yeah so we are reading up images and so on uh so let's look at a couple of images and 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 then we can uh see like you know so we'll look at uh, the image and as well as the digit montage uh, as well as the labels okay so uh yeah so you can see that uh, you know uh, these images have been uh, uh, have been taken off randomly so every time i run this it will be a different set of images which comes up uh depending upon what the montage uh, it 
it randomly picks up images uh, from the function. Okay. Uh, now let's define layers in the text. Okay. So uh, what I can do is, if you look at each of these images, it is. Uh, 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 I'll take each of these images to be 28 cross 28. Okay. And uh, I'll start off by creating a layer, which they'll be, I'll take a convolutional layer, a ReLU, a max pooling, a fully connected soft max and classification, right? So whatever layers I had just described to you in the morning session. Uh, so there's an image input, convolution, ReLU, max pooling, fully connected soft max and classification, right? So I hope the you understood the task. So the task is to identify what digit is there in the image. So you basically have 10 classes uh, which go from zero to nine. And uh, each image in this is uh, uh, handwritten and you just need to identify what is the handwritten digit, right? So, uh, so many of you were asking questions on how we can define networks via uh, in via text or via code. So this is how you can do it. Like uh, you can simply type in layers and uh, have layers uh, listed one after the other. And this clear creates a layer object uh, here, which which gives you all of these outputs. Yeah. So our images are of size 220, 28 cross 28. Our images are grayscale in nature or, or, uh, or binary in nature. So uh, we have, uh, just made it one. Uh, our convolutional layers, uh, we've put in a size here, a ReLU layer and max pooling layer again. And in our fully connected layer, since we have 10 classes, we have just put in 10 and along with the soft max and classification layer. All right. Uh, so we can go ahead and do the same thing in Deep Network Designer, but let me, let me go ahead and uh, run this. And then open up Deep Network uh, Designer or DND. I'll go to Apps and I'll open up Deep Network Designer. Yes. Uh, so there are a lot of questions. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not answering many of them because I think some of them will get addressed as soon as uh, we run through this. But uh, yeah, let's let's maybe reserve the questions for a bit. Uh, please keep them putting keep putting them in the chat, and I'll I'll answer them at the end of uh, end of this. All right. So, uh, yeah. So you can see, uh, like Deep Network Designer has popped up. Let's just go ahead with this and So yeah, so Deep Network Designer has popped up. I'll, I'll import this network from the workspace. You see it automatically identified a, layer, uh, a network which is there. So I can import it simply. And uh, so, and this works in a similar fashion if you import networks via Onyx. Uh, so you can simply import this and go ahead with this, all right? Uh, finally, uh, you can also set, uh, so, you can modify this here as well. Like, you know, you can, you have all of these uh, options here, which you can use to modify things. Uh, and, uh, and you can go ahead and use all of those. All right. Uh, so you have, uh, 
convolutional layers, number of filters, filter size, uh, strides, dilation factors, and weight learning factors, and so on. So these are uh, these uh, parameters are called hyperparameters, and 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 you can change these uh, in the network as well. All right. So there is. Um, there is not really a good way to kind of uh, maybe change them. Uh, like uh, you can do an initial selection and then uh, identify what, uh, like you know, what works well. All right. Uh, so the next option is to provide training options. Okay. So uh, and you do that simply by using the function called training options. Uh, so if you look at help on training options. You have all of these name value pairs which appear here, appear there. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so you can see it provides training options for a deep neural network. Uh, and you can go ahead and uh, say, look at examples, monitor. Yeah. So, what are the different training options you have? So, you have uh, your solvers. Uh, so, either you can select stochastic gradient descent, or you can select uh, other solvers like uh, RMS prop or Adam. Uh, other than that, uh, other things such as uh, say providing a verbose output or uh, uh, at what frequency you can provide something like uh, the number of epochs, uh, the batch size, uh, your shuffling validation, whether you want valid, how often do you want validation? Uh, and in case you want validation, then uh, where do you get that data from? Uh, so validation frequency and patience, initial learning rate, uh, your learning rate schedule, and uh, yeah, drop rate, drop factor. So you can see a bunch of parameter options here, and each one of them you have what exactly it means, and along with additional detail on it, uh, which should be there at the end of this. Okay, so uh, again, you can go over the references, check. Uh, what each of these parameters means, and uh, you know, read more about them, and then change those. All right. So uh, you can go ahead and let's let's go ahead and do training, uh, and uh, I'll see if it works. If it does not work well on mine, I'll I'll, I'll just open up the train network which I have saved on, and 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 uh, do that. Okay. So. Uh, so now that it is training, it might uh, take a bit of time. So there, let's let's address a few questions here. All right. So there are a couple of questions on. Uh, so I guess you all uh, got. Uh, there are a couple qu of questions on. Uh, uh, like training from scratch, right? So, so I think we, we we saw how you could how simple it was to create networks from scratch for this MNIST example, and how you can get started with that. Okay, uh, so MATLAB automatically takes on GPUs uh, when present, so you don't have to do anything additional in terms of configuration. Uh, it will automatic if you if your computer has a GPU. Uh, it will it will go ahead and 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 use that, all right. Uh, so so there isn't really any issue there. Uh, so please clarify on label files. Is it one single file or multiple files? So as I said, uh, your labels can be either taken off from your folder names itself, or it can be taken off. So there aren't separate label files as such, unless you are doing something like semantic segmentation and so on. But uh, if you are working with just typical labels, you your labels can just be your file names or extracted from your file names or your folder names for a classification task like this. 
how do you decide the number of epochs uh i'd say that uh, decide it depending upon uh like you know how much data do you have and so on and so forth so uh like uh, uh there is again no hard and fast rule but uh, maybe try it for 10 epochs uh if if your network does not stabilize by then try it for some more it's 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 primarily um uh primarily that again similar things for the number of iterations and uh, like you know other uh frequencies are there gpu facilities like collab at uh, matlab offered by matlab so there isn't anything like this at present so we do have you can connect up to gpus uh, and we do do that when we do workshops uh, for a small group but uh, uh, but uh, there's nothing like that at present there is something uh, which might come i'm not sure of the timeline so i i I'll, i'll not highlight that if you want to kind of uh, if you want to kind of uh like you know uh so basically if you're looking at parallelizing or if you're looking at increase uh, like increasing uh, uh adding additional compute power uh what you can do is simply look at uh, these environment options in the home tab so inside this you can uh, right now i do not have a cluster which i'm connecting up to but if you have a cluster Uh, either a local cluster or a cloud cluster you can go ahead and uh, add those and uh, that can help you increase your uh, increase your sort of uh, speed okay and uh, you can even up connect up to cloud services so i think uh, you can easily connect up to aws or azure clouds uh, will will uh, and will we we'll keep will keep adding cloud services on to that uh so is aws and azure i can i know we we work very seamlessly with uh others you might need you can work with again but uh, you might need to do some sort of setup uh yourself so how to configure gpus and uh, share code among cpus and gpus so if you are if you have gpus connected to your system they automatically show up and uh, it will take a gpu for your work uh, so a gpu or something will will come up here so i do not have a gpu on my laptop uh, so it's not uh, kind of you know highlighting all right so let me see where the training came up so yes i'll i'll try and share these slides and uh, we'll see uh, so you can see training uh, accuracy is somewhere like around 10% and it's it's been some time so we'll uh, will uh, so 10% is not much right so 10% is like baseline uh, like random accuracy there are 10 classes if we picked one of those 10 will be correct one by 10th of the time right so uh, uh, so this is like as good as random uh, mm, uh, random training right uh, so random shot in the dark sort of right so so let's uh, go ahead and let's look at what we can so this isn't really working and this is what will happen if if you start with your own deep learning applications okay so in that case what you need to do is uh, you uh, you need to kind of you know tweak your uh network and tweak tweak your training options and 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 see what you can do okay so earlier my network training options were like this what i'll do is i'll i'll try and specify a uh, a learning rate uh let me put in a learning rate like this and uh, you know or uh, let me put in a learning rate uh like like this so we did not specify the learning rate earlier let me just go ahead and do that and and let's see okay so uh as i said so training 
options can be specified by one single function training options and training is done simply by one single function called train network which you give your training data training labels your network itself and your training options all right so you just have to create these four variables and then supply these to your training network uh, to your train network function all right so i hope i hope that kind of clarified things up okay and you can see as soon as i started like you know uh, specified a training uh, specified a learning rate uh, you can see we are getting pretty good accuracy right away right so earlier the accuracy was hovering around 10 Uh, and that's where we started but uh, as soon as we are going on with more iterations we can see that you know uh, our accuracy has shot up pretty well and uh, uh, it has uh, gone ahead quite fast right so currently is at what 85 or 90% or somewhere around 85% um uh, so you can see uh, like you know the smoothened uh, yeah let's see there are a couple of questions which have come in uh will google pro accounts work i'm not sure uh, so why don't you write to uh, like please write to me and uh, i'll i'll try to get you an answer but i i'm not sure so uh, so google collab uh like i don't know how uh what the licensing things are uh and uh please write to me at uh this and uh if it's something that i can do something about i'll i'll, I'll try and get back so yep yeah. so let me open. I am audible. Uh, hi everyone. Like, can uh, I had lost internet again, like because of some power reset. Uh, can someone please confirm if if they can hear me? Uh, if you do, then then I can go ahead and. Yeah, uh, you're 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 audible. Yes, sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I think. Uh, uh, so I hope, like you know, I had net let the network train in the meantime. Uh, so you can see that you know we've reached pretty good accuracy around ninety percent or so, uh, simply by. by changing one parameter one uh, specifying one additional parameter we did not really change anything in the network itself and this is what you have to do when working on deep learning problems you can't really expect things to work right out of the box uh, and and so on all right so i'll go ahead and stop this and uh, we'll hopefully have uh, uh, you know see what uh, we can do when uh, the network 
let's see if we can push this up even further uh, with making some modifications to the network. All right. I think it has stopped. So you can see that you know, so it 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 uh, came by pretty fast. So now, um, uh, sometimes in, in uh, like you know, it will it will not be the network. Uh, it it will not be the learning rate. You it uh, you no matter how much you change the learning rate, it might not uh, affect uh, the outcome. So in that case, you may need to modify uh, the network itself. Or use uh, multiple layers uh, like uh, were done in AlexNet or or other networks. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, you take on multiple layers uh, along with uh, say normalization layers, which essentially improve the quality of learning as well as the convergence. All right. Uh, so in this case, what we are doing is again uh, we have. Uh, we are working with the same sort of batch. Uh, so sort of uh, there's a convolutional layer, a batch normalization layer, followed by a red layer. OK, so uh, and we repeat these uh, with having max pooling layers in between. All right. Uh, and the end is again same, uh, a fully connected a soft max and classification. All right. So so. Uh, again, like this is not set in stone. Uh, you can modify this and see what happens on your own. All right. Uh, so uh, again, uh, like you know, you I'll just specify the training options via this function and initiate training. Okay. Uh, so. So let's see how this network trains instead. And you can see network accuracy shoots up pretty fast, uh, like even faster than earlier, I'd say. And also, uh, like you know, we're already at around ninety percent uh, with 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 just this change within thirty iterations or so, right? So if I just go back and open up the other ones, so you see that you know uh, to get to an accuracy of roughly 90, we we needed to kind of come around 100 or 200, 150 iterations. However, here within 50 iterations itself, it's like pretty much there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. So I think. Uh, uh, so let's let's allow it some more time to train. And uh, uh, are there any questions on what we exactly uh, is is did we do? Like, are, uh, any questions? Like, I hope you understand that this is not a hard and like there is no uh, there is no sort of like you know uh, uh, one way to do this. You could play around with it and then do this uh, like 10 different ways and possibly try to get to this okay so uh, if a network is large which part is kept in the research paper i think you have to publish the entire network there is no there is nothing like you have to so it's it's it doesn't uh, like you know it doesn't work this way that you have to keep one part of the of that in the research paper and so on so yeah, so I think we have we're, we're pretty close. We've, we've trained, gone ahead and trained for uh, a while now, and uh, let's let's just stop it and 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 let's see how this network performs on uh, uh, 
on uh, now that we have trained it let's see how it uh, performs in testing okay so i uh, so if you look here uh, let's go back to the script uh, and let's look at classifying the test data now all right uh, yeah so you can load the mnist model and uh, will so to predict uh, testing accuracy uh, what you need to do is again simply provide your network along with your test data set uh, so this is not one single if you look at this variable img data test uh, you'll find that this is not uh, yeah so img data test this is, so this is like a four dimensional sort of 4d variable uh, this is not a single sort of uh, setting uh, and it has okay i can't show you a preview here but yeah uh, you can go ahead and 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 do that okay so so it tested on some data set uh, like which came with mnist uh, yeah yeah transfer learning I'll, I'll the next problem that i'm going to take on is transfer learning itself uh, so we'll just wait for a bit more and then we'll we'll do that mm. so how can we capture a model and have the maximum accuracy yes uh, great question uh, so uh, so again like that is typically a question which kind of often uh, comes in comes up so uh, one thing is uh, like you know if a network trains for a while it's not it's not going to be like you know the network will stop uh, like the accuracy will drop after a bit you know uh, so it, it's it's uh, it's very rare for that to happen <laughs> like it will all of a sudden drop so if you if it trains and it has reached a certain point it will more or less be around that for some reason uh, one more thing is uh, if uh, you look at the apps tab over here uh, and in the deep learning section uh, so you have uh, so you have another app here called experiment manager so what experiment manager allows you to do is design and run multiple deep learning experiments and compare the performance of the net networks with each other okay uh, so uh, if you open this up you can add on uh, say these three experiments that i just did first with a very basic network no learning rate specified second with some learning rate specified and third with a new network configuration itself so you can do all of these by setting these up in experiment manager and the experiment manager will run all of these for you and select one which comes out well all right uh, i do not have a ready-made example right now and i think it might get too complex given that uh, deep learning itself is very new for a lot in uh, of people in the audience but uh, again as always like the documentation is 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 a really good place to begin with Okay, so if you want to kind of uh, look at uh, the documentation page, and if you simply type in experiment manager, so if you simply type in experiment manager, uh, uh, you should get to that documentation and it will take you through each of the steps one by one. So you can, uh, so, how how can you sweep hyperparameters uh, while training a classification network? How can you sweep hyperparameters when training a regression network? How can you configure experiments and and sort and so on and so forth? All right. Uh, so I hope that answers it. Most papers involve cross validation. Uh, is it mandatory to have cross validation every time? Uh, it's not mandatory, but it's a good practice. And uh, what validation guards against is uh, 
uh, overfitting and uh, like you know it it guards whether you will have done uh, whether your neural network model is general enough whether it can handle uh, data uh, uh, across different classes and so on all right so it's it's it's, it's essentially that so it's essential it's good if you can uh, if you can kind of you know divide your net uh, data into some validation set as well yeah so yeah that answers it what i'll do is i'll i'll go back and i'll show you how you can use it for uh testing now uh, so now let's let's so we got some test accuracy uh in in terms of like you know uh somewhere like 99 percent which was what we had got earlier uh so now let's try and classify our own images here okay so this time around we'll we'll do this similar to what we had done in the alexnet example previously uh so in that case uh, what you can do uh, what we can do is we can if you look at the handwritten digits which we already have we can pick these up and uh, see how the network performs okay so yeah so let's uh, i'm sorry i've changed the variable uh, changed the location yeah let's try this now so as you can see i just defined a data store similar to earlier uh, and uh, we provided the image uh, and resized it and predicted it looked at prediction okay so you can see uh, this two it is predicted as okay uh, the prediction is not coming it's predicted as three uh, this four is predicted as four and you can so on and so forth all right now you can see the prediction is obtained here and the prediction itself is given to the title all right so you can see how um uh simply you could go about doing this and uh yeah just i think we're at the end of this uh yeah we could see that how uh, these are also written in a different sort of font size the lighting is different but, uh, this still works right so just to highlight all of these things we've, we've just taken a few slide images and and then worked on this uh other than changing the fully connected part what else can be done in transfer learning uh yeah some cases it might have got incorrectly or it i, I think the prediction did not show because this was this uh, these controls were hovering over this what i'll do is i'll just transfer these files to you and 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 you can this you can then try it out for yourself all right and and work with that okay so yeah yeah i think it got all the predictions i'm not sure if it got any wrong but yeah this this picture this image it had gotten in the way of the prediction in some cases so it might not have been visible the prediction so other than changing the fully connected is there something else so uh, you can go ahead and add if add more networks to uh, add more links to it if needed uh, so that is definitely there uh, let's let's look at a transfer learning example now all right uh, let's get back to the present and look at transfer learning okay uh, so this time around we'll look at uh, a slightly different sort of example so those were uh, still images captured by the, by a camera or a, or a scanner in this case we'll look at classifying mri images so we'll, uh, use transfer learning and use pre-trained models to classify mri images and also visualize which part of the net which part of the image the net is looking at all right uh, so if you if you want more on this example like you know this example is already readily available on github on the mathworks repository uh, so you can you can go ahead and download this as well i'll i'll put a link at the end of this okay um, yeah 
so it's 325 i hope we can we can i think we can finish this in the next 20 minutes and and i'll share a few resources with you all right so let's open up open this up and and, and see where it goes so so i'll go ahead and close everything else um Uh, yeah. I think this was still training for some reason. I'll go ahead and close this. Yeah. So in the meantime, any questions till this point? Uh, if you want, if you have any questions, then uh i'd be happy to take them and uh, otherwise we can uh let me just start resharing in a bit so let me just check the q a as well um uh, uh I think all of these are from earlier. Okay, no, there are some questions which are new. A basic question: What is the difference between epochs and iterations? Uh, yeah, so iterations are essentially uh, when uh, you are uh, going over, like when you present, say, one one sample to the network and 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 start with that. While epochs are like uh, one epoch might be when you have given shown the network all of the samples which you have in one go and now you are like uh, uh, doing a repeat now uh, when when showing another set of samples so is the training screen showing in the training screen it was showing one cpu does it mean gpu no no it means cpu itself uh, so i had uh, i think this might have gotten answered uh, uh yep so all right uh let me just go ahead and start sharing and hopefully yeah, this works now Is this fine? Uh, yep. So if there are no other questions, I'll, I'll just wait for, yeah. So we have our MATLAB here and uh, yeah. yeah sorry about that uh yeah let's let's get started on this one okay um so in this case uh our objective is again uh our objective is transfer learning uh is is the screen visible i think i am sharing this from my end uh can someone just uh help out here uh yep okay great great thank you uh so all right so if you look at uh so let's look at this transfer learning exercise and uh then then go ahead with this okay so uh, uh the objective here is uh we uh so we took uh the mnist example now in this example what we are trying to do is 
we are trying to take on MRI images and uh, trying to identify uh, the age of the participant from whom this image was taken. All right. So these images have been taken from an open neuro data source. Uh, and uh, what we're doing is we are uh, we have participants in age from three to five, seven to twelve, and participants older than eighteen. All right. So uh, we can look at original three D volumes. What we are what we'll do is uh, we'll use ResNet eighteen to perform this, uh, and uh, from this three D volume, so this is a three D image. Uh, we'll take the mid slice. So we'll take the horizontal mid slice here. And we'll use this mid slice to train the model. All right. So, so let's just look at uh, uh, the root folder and read this data. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, MRI images are uh, are in a particular format called Nifty, uh, NIFTI. Uh, so uh, these images uh, are of the end uh, are of the extension dot nii uh, and sometimes they are also zipped uh, in this case gzipped all right uh, so hence the nii dot gz uh, so if you visualize any volume here uh, so you can there are ready made functions to read these so in this case because this is a very specialized image format so im read does not work uh, you have to use nifty read and uh, you can go ahead and create your custom data store for reading these as well all right what we are what we'll be doing is we have taken this uh, nifty images and removed uh, the skull regions and uh, uh, just looked at the middle slice so the middle slice looks something like this all right uh, now let's explore what the participant data also looks like. Okay, so if you want to look at the participant data yourself, uh, so this is what uh, the participant data set looks like. So, uh, yeah. So let me open up uh, the participant data set in a tab separated file. So essentially, it uh, so it's a TG file which you can open in Excel or so on. So you have your participant data has your participant ID, which is something like this, sub pixar one. It has the participant age, which is like say four years, some some months. So it's a decimal point uh, because of uh, like you know when the data was acquired versus when the what the Date of birth was the, of the participant was you can get it from there. The age group that the particular child is in, either four year old or so on, whether it's a child or an adult, the gender, the handedness, whether it's right or left handed, uh, a bunch of other parameters and so on and so forth. All right, but we basically have images which have this name along with this data. Okay, so what we are doing is we are just reading this data set from uh, this file so participants.tsv file okay so we set, uh, we use tdf read to read this and uh, create a table data type out of it and if we just show it this is what the two they will look like okay so let me just wait for this to run so this is what your participant data would look like your age age group child gender handedness and a bunch of other parameters all right now uh, now uh, if you look at uh, the number of uh, so once you have gotten this into this age so in this table data type it becomes really easy to kind of do any sort of further processing on it okay so Within this data type, if you just type in participant dot data dot age class, okay. Uh, so 
you can uh, so if you can see if you just write in participant dot data dot age you'll get access to this variable you can check if uh, you can put in some conditions like you know if it's greater than three or less than six uh, you assign it a class and you have that class specified within this table itself you can add that and uh, make it a categorical class which is like uh, ages three to five so this is the first label that you have defined basically okay this is the second label on uh, whether participants are aged between 7 and 13 and this is participants greater than 18 all right and if you if you just look at summary statistics here uh, so there are 65 people uh, 65 uh, images from this first class while there are only 57 and 33 in the second and third. All right. Now, uh, uh, this next bit is on image pre-processing, uh, wherein you are uh, preparing this 2D image data set, where you are getting this 2D image data from that 3D images. All right. Uh, so I'll not highlight this much apart from saying just what's happening because uh, the focus of our interaction is on deep learning. I'll, 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 so that's why I'll not highlight this much. So, so you can see, uh, you know, uh, this are what mid slices from the 3D image look like. So if you have, uh, say, uh, this 3D image, you actually take a slice here and you'll get a slice like that. And you can see there are uh, skull regions around this that you need to remove. Uh, so this is done in an operation which is known as skull stripping. So what we do is uh, we extract this data, do skull stripping, uh, apply augmentation. So we've put in some controls to do that. And uh, it is all of these uh, settings uh, go into this particular function. And it's applying skull stripping, applying augmentation, and, and, and going ahead and doing that. Okay. So if you want to know exactly what is happening, you can you can just go ahead and open this, and you'll get a, a get an idea about what is happening here. All right. So uh, following this, we have uh, 2D images which uh, appear. Okay. Uh, so we our object now that images are two dimensional, uh, so we can simply use an image data store to work with them. All right. So in this case, uh, these images will appear here. Uh, so these image sets are, will appear here. So their, uh, their ages are, uh, so we have images in the 7 to 12 group, some images in the 3 to 5 group, and some images in the adults group. All right. So. Uh, essentially, we have taken the folder names itself. We have specified those the say, uh, to be the same as the labels that we created initially. So if you remember from earlier, uh, we had created this age class variable, which was the same. So we have renamed the folders in the same fashion. All right. So. So image data store is done, and you can see like uh, this image data store has around 310 images, and uh, so on. All right. So now let's go ahead and uh, uh, shuffle these and split it into training, validation, and so on and so forth. All right. So let's just go ahead and uh, uh, and 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 look at just a montage of what. A what it looks like okay so yeah so this is what the images themselves look like uh, so you have uh, say the 3 to 5 year range of images and so then after processing uh, these are different images these are not the same like after skull removal of this image this looks like this these are random images again taken from each of the classes uh, and you can see how things appear Okay, so uh, you can see uh, in you know uh, in age in very young kids this area is like you know there are a uh, uh, 
bunch of these things which are appearing like the these blank space uh, these dark spaces in between these are called ventricles uh, so you can see these are uh, still developing while in as they grow up as people grow up these uh, fill up to quite an extent and then again in adults and in uh, uh, in geriatrics so you you see an increase in the ventricle size but then there is also filling up it's it's somewhere in between like here okay so so in this case uh, uh, so we'll just uh, uh, like you know uh, we'll just do this again and we'll just see every time you update this you can see random images get selected and uh, yeah so our objective is to if we give this image to the neural net is it able to give me back the age category which it belongs to right so now let's just get into training testing and validation okay so uh, this is something which we did not cover earlier so i I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to pay attention here yeah so uh, if you you simply give the image data store along with your uh, split percentage uh, to something like uh, to a variable such as uh, to a function such as split each label and it will split all three labels that the 3 to uh, 5 7 to 12 as well as adults into three uh, into training and testing sets in this percentage mentioned so 85% will be in training the remaining will be in testing and if i run this you will see that the resultants will also be data stores themselves okay uh, so is this clear is this step clear it is essential this step be clear to you so that you know if uh, so that when you are doing things yourself uh, you know what uh, how how easy or simple it is okay so you can split each of these into say 85 15 percent uh, and what you can do is you can take the training data set and again split it into training and validation okay so we split 85 percent into training 15 percent into testing and then from this 85 percent you can see uh, this train image data store we took 80 percent it for of it for training and 20 percent of it for validation all right so you can so this is a very usual way of doing that uh, but these percentages can vary quite a bit all right so let me see there are a couple of questions which kind of come up can we fix the sets to some number so that the same sets are taken each time or uh uh or uh, can you s s fix the sets to some number as in like uh, can you fix the number of images to be taken from each set is that what you mean same set of images yeah you, uh, then you can simply specify which images from the data store you want for training and which for testing right you can simply create these data stores yourself uh so if you want to do that either you can split it uh like right away uh either specify the image names from the data store or image types from the data store and and you can simply create these three data stores there yeah yeah you can do that uh although if you kind of try and highlight that uh, you know if you if you share that in uh, that code with someone someone will is bound to point out that why are you using the same images each time uh, uh, for training validation uh, and uh, yeah so so that's bound to happen uh, because they'll uh, they'll suspect that uh, it, it will uh, you you are using you are modifying or uh, you know you are not you are not doing things randomly because uh there is your cherry picking data or, or to say so to speak yeah 
if you are to compare two nets, should you not the, use the same sets? So you should use the same data sets to compare, but your uh, you should use the same data set as a large. You don't need to use the same images to compare. Okay, uh, so uh, you can use the same hundred or two hundred set of images to kind of work with, but you don't need to select these same ten images and and do that. All right. Uh, but uh, definitely, so it, uh, you, uh, yeah, what you mentioned might be useful in case, like you know, there are say some edge cases. Uh, uh, in if if you have say some edge cases which uh, you know uh, are special, you which you know that these were designed to create an error. Uh, those I think it's fine if you give them non in a non-random fashion and see how the network behaves. That I think. Can definitely be done in a non-random fashion, but for a general comparison, I'd still recommend that uh, uh, you know uh, you do a random sort of selection from the data set. Uh, although reviewers might might ask you differently, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so there is another question which says that if the split is randomized, how do you get the equal percentage of data from each data category? So so this is like it is splitting each label into 85 15 so it is not splitting the entire data set it is splitting each label so we uh, we so essentially we are getting we, it is we are also taking the label information in place okay so so if you see here you know uh, you'll see what i mean uh, so this uh, image highlights just what we have done. Uh, yes, the number of images for one group might be more than the other, but the split is more or less even. You can see uh, the ratio of the split across the three age groups is more or less even. All right. Yeah. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, train the train ResNet. Okay. Uh, so, uh, before we train ResNet at all, let's do uh, like uh, let's see what it it predicts if we kind of give it one of one of the images. Okay, so uh, what we did was uh, we simply imported ResNet similar to AlexNet and uh, looked at the input size. Okay, net dot layers input size, and we resized our image. According to the input size, and this is one image which we've read from our data uh, from from our folders. But uh, you can you can pick any one, okay? And if we go ahead and uh, run this, so let's let's look at what ResNet says it is. Yeah. Yeah, so ResNet predicts it uh, to be something called the chambered Nautilus. Okay, so the ResNet 18 prediction for this image that we gave in, uh, say classified net image, is uh, chambered Nautilus. But that obviously is incorrect because a this is what a chambered Nautilus looks like. Yeah. So now. So, so obviously we'll we'll have to look at transfer learning, right? So, as I said, we'll replace the five layers with the ones we want. So, uh, so we create a new set of layers hmm, uh, called, say, a fully connected and a classification layer. Okay. Uh, so, if we uh, and the number of elements in this layer we are taking from the number of labels that there are okay so from the image data store dot labels we are finding out how many categories there are and based on that we are computing uh, how many uh, number of classes might there be so the number of classes is 3 as we know and so we can define a new layer uh, which have a fully connected layer or with three classes. Okay, the name uh, of the layer itself will be new fully connected layer, 
and we provide some more other uh, parameters such as the learning rate and bias learning rate and so on okay uh, and what we can do is we comp we got the layer graph from the earlier network so we can just simply maybe give this so you got the layer graph here uh, you can go ahead and replace uh, this with uh, your fully connected layer so you can see you can replace layer graph uh, and inside layer graph uh, you had uh, let's see the network names so you replace essentially the fc 1000 layer uh, so let's open up uh, maybe dnd &D and uh, and do this so we can go to apps you can also open up deep network designer from the command window simply by writing that in without any spaces uh, and, and you can go ahead and do that so you are replacing essentially the fully connected layer with 1000 classes with the new fully connected layer okay uh, and you are putting in a new classification layer uh, which will replace your own predictions okay so again you are replacing individual layers here okay uh, and if you if you look here this is what it will look like um yeah 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 so i hope this is visible if not i'll i'll just open this up in a new figure window and have that yeah so the final layers of resnet 18 were uh like this so you had the fully connected probabilistic and classification layer we replaced this with our new fully connected layer we retained the softmax layer but we replaced the classification layer which had thousand classes to kind of make it one with three all right so we could do the same operation in uh, in uh, deep network designer as well uh, so maybe uh, open up resnet 18 uh, look at yeah so open up network uh, resnet 18 uh, you can see resnet and its configuration here uh, you can go to the very bottom uh, here and uh, you can simply change these so they drag drop a fully connected layer and drag drop a classification layer from the very bottom okay uh, so i'll break these connections and form these so i can simply remove have this output v3 and this output is automatic and our bias and weight learn factors were somewhere around 10 if if if, we, if i'm correct uh but yeah and uh, i can go ahead and delete these two auto arrange this analyze if it is correct okay So it has 17 layers, 71 layers, sorry. And uh, there isn't really any warning or error because all of the things work fine. Uh, so I can go ahead and export this and use it or generate code for it. Uh, uh, so if you want to manually do this and uh, so you can do that as well. All right. So uh, again, now uh, let's just, uh, look at yeah yeah so this this removes this so 
uh, let's just look at the rest of it. Uh, yeah, so before training, you you would need to kind of make it make your data set compatible with your network, right? So in that case, uh, uh, you could simply take the input size and and work with that, or uh, you can go ahead and uh, do your image data augmentation as well. All right. Uh, so in this case, you will uh, implement augmentation by uh, implementing rotation, uh, and you'll do that both for your training, validation, and testing. All right. So you have your image data augmenter. Uh, and we'll, we'll create an augmented image data store by uh, looking at uh, your size of the images. And uh, the image augmenter is this. That is rotation uh, between minus 30 and 30 degrees. We do not scale the image in this case, but we are just doing rotations because scaling would change things. So that's why. So we simply go ahead and do this. Uh, yeah. So you can see, uh, like, you know, so we have our data store, uh, which has images like two, 212 images in training, validation, and testing. Uh, let's just go ahead and set out our training options similar to earlier. So you can set out training options in this fashion as well, in, instead of writing it in the function. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you provided your training options here. And following that, uh, you can train your network, OK? Uh, so I'll, I hope there is a. Let's let's see if if this works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So another thing, another way for you to kind of do this would be uh, using the GUI again. Uh, so once you have designed a network, you see these other two tabs such as data and training. So you could go ahead and select uh, this data. So you could import this data and then work with that, and uh, select training options as well. So you know, so this will again, if once you import data, it gives you augmentation options in the GUI. Uh, but uh, yeah, I uh, like I just wanted to highlight the code one uh, way of doing things because uh, that is definitely more flexible. All right. Um uh, yeah, so it's almost four four now. Okay. Uh would this be okay if would it be okay if I extended this by say 10 minutes or 15 minutes? 415. Would this be fine? We will just wrap up this example and I'll get resources with you and go ahead. Yeah. Great. Uh sure. So so in the meantime, what I'll ask you is uh like you know. Uh, if you could just provide feedback for this. Uh, so let me just maybe go ahead and uh, share this with you. So yeah. So can can you sure? Can you please? Uh, complete this feedback form. Uh, I'll just uh, put this link in the in the chat, and uh, essentially it is to gather your past experience with deep learning uh, and uh, whether how effective you found this session. So, so. Uh, if you found it too slow, if you found it too fast, if you found that we did not answer your questions, uh, uh, so please go ahead and uh, and and answer this. Um, so in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and uh, this might take you a couple of minutes. So in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and 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 show you where where training is, and uh, we'll we'll try and walk you through the rest of it. All right. 
so uh, yeah as you can see uh, you know so we had three classes which we had to divide this into so by default if we kind of computed accuracy uh, so our accuracy would you know uh, be around uh, 30% or so but you can see our accuracy is already improving uh, yeah so there is one question on area under curves versus roc curves so auc uh, which which keeps coming up so it's essentially the same thing so area roc curve so area under the receiver operating characteristic curve is uh, is what it is found so it is more relevant uh in the machine learning domain than in here but uh but yeah uh, just a second Hadi. so you can put in your receiver operating characteristics here and yeah let me see what it kind of puts in This is a different kind of ROC. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, you know, if you look at ROC, you are looking at checking uh, the the quality of your predictions okay uh, so uh, you say if you are doing a binary sort of problem or or even a multi class problem so you look at uh, something like the true positive or false positive ratios for a class and uh, uh, and and based on that you arrive at uh, your uh, uh, threshold values all right so um yeah so so what i'd say is like uh mm, while area under the curve is like area under this entire roc curve itself like so area under this curve itself so uh, so yeah if there are say multiple classifiers here so you would you would pick out uh, one having like the maximum area under it, uh, but again you'll also look at uh, uh, look at other characteristics such as the true positive and false positive rates to uh, make your decision. All right. So I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll I'll just share the link again. I I, I by mistake sent it only to panelists and uh, yeah let me let me share that link over yep can you please complete this feedback form please go ahead and complete this uh, in the meantime let's see check on training progress you can see the training progress is quite good uh, yeah uh, so so if you could uh, if i go through this feedback form with you uh, i'll i'll go ahead and fill it out myself uh so let me go check this so essentially you can enter your name uh you your email address uh so uh, we've put in most of the things as uh mandatory uh but yeah like feel free to kind of uh, put in anything so so let me put in as a professional math works my department is say electronics um say depending upon what you do uh, so just point out what version 
of MATLAB do you last used? What languages you were currently working on? Did you know about these capabilities prior to the seminar? Uh, and uh, uh, did your knowledge or understanding improve based on any other as a result of this webinar? Uh, and do you feel you might use deep learning capabilities in MATLAB following this webinar? And how likely are you to extreme to recommend us? As well as how was I and how were I and Dave as uh, speakers or presenters for the session? Where was our pace bad or good? Was our clarity bad or good? Or the relevance of the examples that we took on bad or good? And please put in any other feedback that you have, as well as uh, in what area you would like to talk to us about. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so. Yeah, in case you do not want, uh, 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 you do not want to fill this up as well. You can you can simply check in uh, that you are not ready, and and, and and it's fine. So, yeah, I think it has reached quite a stage. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll I'll stop this at this moment. Uh, hopefully, you will have completed this uh, feedback, or you can you can wait and. Complete this feedback as well later. So I'll go ahead and uh, stop this here. I think we are, we, we are at fairly at a 90% sort of accuracy. Hopefully, it retains that when stopping and it doesn't go back. And uh, yeah. So Yeah. So now let's just look at confusion charts and uh, here. So just to highlight how you might be able to kind of compare this network accuracy. So we saw our final accuracy is somewhere around the uh, uh, our validation accuracy is somewhere around 67%, but our training accuracy is pretty high. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we perform and, and, and we'll, we'll see there. Okay, so we can go ahead and test this. I could have let it train for a lot more time, but uh, I just wanted to kind of highlight this. Yeah, so. Uh, you can see that you know our, our testing accuracy is somewhere around the same. So uh, you can see that uh, you know if you created a layer graph, uh, yeah. So if we compare our test accuracy, uh, our testing accuracy here, so we uh, classify. Uh, our, uh, using our trained network, we classify our data store and we get the test prediction and so on. And if we just compare it, uh, our accuracy is somewhere around 65%, which we can definitely improve upon. Yeah. So you can go ahead and uh, uh, complete, uh, like you know, plot your confusion matrix simply by providing your uh, actual labels and your predictions. Okay. Uh, so you can see that uh, the younger uh, folks we could accurately kind of uh, uh, classify. Uh, so almost all of them were classified correctly, while it is the older ones which were either misclassified as either young or as or as uh, like you know mostly they were misclassified as young, uh, and then there were some adults who were misclassified as in as well young here, right? But mostly, this also was good. So you can see the color scheme and everything is there. Uh, so this is correct. Anything which is red is bad, and anything which is blue is OK. Right? So, so if you further evaluate this uh, and look at occlusion sensitivity maps, so uh, essentially, this is a way to identify what parts of the image the network was looking at. So in general, you might have found that you know there is a lot of uh, uh, research ongoing about why a deep neural network came to a particular decision uh, and uh, why not. So, you know, why did it 
uh, like so under deep learning explainability i think there's a lot of research work which is ongoing uh, so you can also choose to kind of uh, look at uh, what uh, sort of uh, information that uh, you know is deep neural network itself looking at so now here you can see the occlusion map is somewhere like it's looking at these sets of images it's not really looking at uh, the center uh, so that is why uh, there is also it's also a bad prediction right uh, so it's 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 like 66% accuracy so if we had let it train further uh, so you would have found that uh, you could create these sort of occlusion maps yourself and uh, uh, those occlusion maps would highlight why uh, the network is making a particular set of decisions right so in this case it's very obvious that uh, because it is uh, the uh, in this case i can see that the inaccuracy in these decisions is because the network itself is looking at these hotspot regions which are on the boundary which are uh, not which do not correspond to the brain regions themselves right so because it is not looking at the brain region itself then how would it expect to kind of uh, do a correct sort of uh, decision right so so hence the reduction in accuracy so how can we improve this we can improve this by letting the network train for longer i did not have a gpu so i did not let it train for longer but you can go ahead and 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 see if uh, uh, if if uh, you wanted to uh, let it train for longer as well all right mm. and finally i think uh, if we look at occlusion sensitivity maps uh, by group or by category you you can you can you can do do that as well okay so yeah so any questions here at this point uh, uh, yeah so i'll just put in uh, so let me just get back to the presentation wrap it up quickly and then and then uh, share the resources with you okay so we saw how you could load or modify a pre trained network we looked at resnet 18 uh, how you could adjust training options and evaluate accuracy we did not adjust training options but you could you could go ahead and do that so in that uh, and and it would have trained better and it would have given better accuracy definitely so uh, uh, so you can load uh, pre-trained networks programmatically or interactively via deep network designer so i showed you both in this case uh, you, so you saw how transfer learning you can begin to use transfer learning and uh, work with that yep so uh, some people asked about deep learning for signals but uh, yeah, because we are short on time and the focus of the uh, uh, the the entire event is machine learning for computer vision will will not look at this at all so we'll skip this so there's a huge amount of uh, thing uh, like you know uh, work there as well for deep learning for signals and we'll finally quickly go over deployment aspects right now okay and i'll i'll share the links to the code with you uh, in just a bit okay so so as i said you could uh, in the end your deep learning does not needs to kind of work on some embedded platform or some sort of other platform so you really need to think about deployment and scaling as well uh, it could be an enterprise infrastructure uh, say uh, or in a hospital or in a industrial setting where uh, or on embedded systems such as on a car or a vehicle or a uh, or a heart rate monitor for example right so uh, so MATLAB can help you generate, auto-generate C, C++, and CUDA code for your deployment targets. So if you're working with GPUs, uh, like, you know, generating CUDA code or generating C, C++ code would be difficult uh, and to do it well, uh, I think would be difficult. So Dave's, uh, as he had highlighted earlier, it's uh, uh, MATLAB can generate optimized CUDA code for you. And uh, you can do code generation for your CPUs from Intel or ARM, your GPUs from NVIDIA, AMD or Intel, or FPGAs, 
or SOC platforms like Zinc and uh, those from uh, Xilinx and Intel. All right. Uh, so, so uh, I'll not talk about deploying to network enterprise infrastructure, but if uh, but you can you can also kind of uh, you know deploy to uh, cloud platforms and have it interface with uh, a bunch of databases, streaming, and so on and so forth. Okay. So deep learning in MATLAB itself has come a long way. Uh, so, uh, so the entire objective of this uh, seminar from our end was to highlight how far it has come. And uh, so in 2020, there are over, over 200 examples for deep learning across different domains, right from uh, communications to, uh, to uh, medical imaging to uh, devices and so on. So, and and uh, reinforcement learning, deep learning are areas where each and every release has a lot of new additions. Mm. Now, if you want to try things out yourself, uh, these are a few things which you should go ahead with. Okay. So the first thing that you can do, uh, and this would not really require a license from your end, is look at deep learning on ramp. Mm, so, so if you just search for uh, deep learning on ramp, uh, so this is the first result which comes up. I'll I'll put this in the chat as well. So this is like a two-hour course to get started with deep learning. You can familiarize yourself with the concepts, uh, use pre-trained networks and uh, see how you can collect data manage data for yourself perform your transfer learning and, and 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 do that right so so essentially whatever we covered in this seminar uh, you can do this on your own uh, and uh, and and gain more confidence there uh, and this would you you may just need to sign in and at the end of this you'll you'll get like a a, a certificate to kind of uh, of completion so please go ahead and and uh, use this. Uh, make use of this uh, to kind of you know uh, work uh, uh, work with MATLAB. Okay, another thing I think I skipped out on this. Yeah, uh, let me just highlight this here. So I'm sure. So I think I think you're also doing a lot of these things. Uh, let me sh show you a longer course. So if I go on to matlabacademy.mathworks.com, so uh, there are a bunch of longer courses which are say 15 to 16 hours across different domains, and there is a deep learning course here as well. So some of these courses. Uh, some of these courses will also be available uh, for so there is a reinforcement learning on ramp if you are interested in that uh, you can just search for that and get that yep so there is a matlab uh, deep learning with matlab longer course so these should be available uh, if you have a license uh, uh, with an educational license uh, so uh, so the deep learning on ramp is free uh, you can go ahead and do this uh, without any charge but the other one is uh, linked to your educational license uh, so uh, uh, if you want to do this on your own i think it i, I think charges might be somewhere like 1000 to 3000 somewhere somewhere in that range i'm not sure exactly uh, but uh, uh, but uh, in, instead you can you can uh, you can go ahead and explore whether you find these useful at all, and uh, and then see for yourself. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to highlight was uh, the deep learning landing page at MathWorks. So if you go onto the MathWorks website on the landing page itself, uh, machine learning, deep learning, and reinforcement learning are are, are three key highlights. If you look at deep learning, 
you'll find that uh, you know this particular page has information on a lot of things which you can try out there are case studies from industry as well as education uh, how do you prepare label image data and so on designing and training networks so there are a lot more resources which are available uh, so this is quite a good page to kind of visit and this can take you to a lot of other web pages so yep so you can do that uh, so you can import uh, uh, networks across things and you can deploy so, so so some people had questions on deployment and you can do that right uh, finally one last sort of resource is uh, uh, if you go onto the events tab over here and uh, look at uh, videos, uh, you can refine these videos uh, by uh, product or by sort of application. So if you search, just refine it to deep learning videos. You can uh, uh, you can go ahead and and uh, view a bunch of them which uh, which which are useful. All right. So you can look at advanced semantic segmentation. So these videos can be anything from five minutes to hour long and so on and so forth. So so we've done a lot of these. So uh, and these can keep you going for. Uh, there's quite a lot of materials and along with these videos you should have links to kind of uh, uh, the code that they share so uh, so for example in this case uh, this is a video on auto ml uh, but along with that uh, there are a bunch of links to kind of uh, work through yourself so you you can use these as well to work with this all right uh, and uh one last thing i'd i'd like to highlight is working with python so if you're if you are working with tensorflow uh, pytorch or so on so you don't need to work in isolation uh so in industry a lot of use cases involve use of both matlab as well as uh python as well as with uh, all of these uh, uh, as well as all of these uh, you know other open source software as well as other proprietary software which uh, uh, which works very well so uh, work with both matlab and python so uh, so you can call matlab from python you can call python from matlab and have it have it do a bunch of these things uh, as well so so you can integrate you can learn how you can integrate python code with matlab code or how to call matlab from python itself and have it do a bunch of routines for you all right so uh yeah so so that's uh, all that i had to uh, share primarily uh as i said shared with you the on ramp uh, a training course which is longer and uh, if you're teaching deep learning and if you're planning to teach deep learning do get in touch with us so i'll just put my email down here uh, so uh, and uh, you can go ahead and uh, I, I put my email in the chat and you can go ahead and uh, email us anytime and, and then we'll, we'll try to get back to you. Uh, yeah, so here's mine and Babe's email as well. Uh, so in case any of you want to kind of email us uh, about uh, what you're doing, uh, I'll be, we'll be happy to kind of get in touch. All right. So uh, one last thing is I'd, I'd ask uh, participants again to kindly fill up this form. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll repost it in the chat. Uh, I know this is a lot to take on uh, over the course of one day. And uh, thank you for your patience with this. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, 
So if you could just fill that feedback form up, I think uh, that would be really useful for us and really useful for me as a presenter to learn more and uh, uh, improve how I can present in the future. Uh, so that's all. So I, I can take on any questions if you have at the end or any comments. So there are a couple of questions on, uh, okay, uh, you want to use VGG16 in your project about mammograms, what classifier uh, would be better? Uh, so uh, I'm not particularly sure, uh, Aparna, so, so, so I think uh, uh, I'm not sure what classifier would be better, but uh, I'd say that, you know, go ahead and try and use it. So before using it, I, I don't think trial and error is a part of uh, scientific research. So, so you have to use it to kind of come up with, uh, come, up, come to a final result. I'm sure you'll face errors in case you face errors, like, you know, feel free to drop us an email. Uh, uh, if I'm not able to resolve it, I'll, I'll point you to the support team and, and uh, they'll, they'll have time to kind of resolve this and so on. Uh, I hope the ROC curve versus AUC is clearer. Uh, uh, Okay. I don't see any other questions. Uh, what made CNN so popular? I think. Uh, um, can we design a complete project in MATLAB online? Okay. There are a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, so MATLAB online is capable of doing a lot. Uh, I'd say that, uh, uh, but uh, it's also very limited in some fashion. So for example, if I open up, let me open up MATLAB online. Uh, so Deep Network Designer uh, is available on MATLAB online. However, the labelers are not available because uh, as you can understand, like labeling itself is a very data intensive task uh, and it's not, Go readily done online, but uh, uh, if your if your project only involves taking a data set, designing a network, training it, and classifying it, uh, and finding the results, I think you can do that in MATLAB online pretty well. Uh, but uh, I, I'd still uh, so it can do the basic stuff really well, but uh, for any sort of uh, Customization, I, I, I highly recommend using an installed version. So you can see in the deep learning section, you have deep network designer, but you do not have experiment manager, which I had pointed out because all of these are very like in computationally intensive tasks, which would involve you transferring data uh, to some, uh, like, you know, to, uh, to either some location. So if, you do not have like a high speed connection and and typically uh, your data also might be sensitive the data that you are working with you may not want to share it so in this case all of because of all those issues it is very limited in its in its uh, uh, it's still very capable if you if you are working if you are beginning but uh, after a while you would need to install it in some sense mm. Uh, so thank you, thank you for uh, the praise in the lecture. Uh, there is one more question on what made CNNs really popular, uh, and so this diagram explains that. So uh, CNNs achieved better accuracy than a set of humans doing the classification themselves, and that is where sort of uh, people or really really began to take notice so they were popular before that as well but within the research or a, a very smaller a smaller community uh, when this happened it, it kind of blew things away yeah so 
yeah so i can't see any other questions so in case of any other questions or comments please feel free to email us uh, so i our email is like highlighted here uh, mine is ppy at the rate mathworks.com dave's is dsingdev at the rate mathworks.com uh, please note that it is s i n g d e o uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the comments. Please, uh, I'll, I'll uh, highly recommend if you could complete this feedback form uh, because uh, that would really help me uh, learn better for how you can paste this. Um, yeah. And otherwise, uh, I think it's 431 already. Uh, so I've kept you for longer than I intended to. I, I apologize for that. Uh, Matt, if you want to uh... thank you so much it was such a wonderful session that uh, nobody thought i mean that the time is getting over sure. all of you are so engrossed into this doing this and listening from you uh, uh, dr santosh would you like to say something thank you very much such a nice uh, explanation thank you very much sure, sir. Bye. Professor Somaraju is also here from NIT Patna. Dr. Somaraju? Yes, madam. So yeah, thank you, Professor. You spent a lot of time actually, and you took longer sessions than we expected. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. And sir. you explained <laughs> everything, and you patiently answered all the questions almost individually in the afternoon session also. So thank you, sir. Thank you from all the, my participants. Thank okay. you, hey, madam. Yeah. Thank you. So on behalf of all the academies, I once again uh, express our sincere thanks to you, Dr. Pai and uh, Dr. Dev Singh, Singh Dev. I'm sorry. <laughs> I always <laughs> it's okay, it. <laughs> and uh, we uh, appreciate uh, the way uh, you have conducted the session. You answered each and every questions. I'm sure that participants uh, have enjoyed the uh, some some of the chat uh, messages we can see they've enjoyed i hope all of you have filled the form please do take out time to complete this uh, copy paste on your browser and fill the form so that uh, we also get some idea and uh, then we look forward to longer association with mathworks and sure. hope that will continue this relationship will grow Thank you. Sure. Sure. Uh, for, Thank you for uh, your... now, <laughs> one more announcement that I wish to make before we go um, and we close the session today, that we have been receiving multiple requests that please take uh, conduct the test on Monday. So based on your inputs, you want to have more time to study. We are uh, now having our next, I mean, this first quiz on Monday immediately after the session and then the next test will be on friday remember so there will be two tests on in the week in the second week right so um, so please enjoy your weekend now thank you so much you mm -hmm. took out uh, took out time dr pai from your weekend and uh, we sincerely once again uh, sure, ma'am. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll share the copy of the slides with you, and I, I think uh, we can, if there is any way to kind of share that with the participants. Yeah, we, we share. We Every day we are sharing not only the YouTube links, and uh, we also share the slides. Thank you. All right, ma'am. Yeah, great. Sony, madam, we are, I've just announced it was uh, because of requests from all all of you that many of you that we thought we keep your uh, i mean weekend free so we are deciding now that we will conduct your quiz on monday immediately after the session is over 7 pm thank you thank you thank you all thanks to all my colleagues and participants thank you may i leave the session now Thank you. Thank you, everyone.